So jumping straight in, I've already made a new project here and I've set up a few things. We have it so that you can press different buttons and they'll highlight to show input. What's left to do is to, when we press one of these buttons, is to either tag the cube, untag the cube, or compare it. If we have the cube already tagged, it will return true and say so. Uh, whereas if we untag it and ask for the compare, then it should return false. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult. However, I have also linked in the description links to these project file. So if you can't follow along the video or you're finding yourself running into issues, you can download that from there and make it a bit easier for yourself. So to get started, we're gonna actually make our tags. For this example, we're gonna be using the gameplay tag table list. This makes a data table, um, which we have yet to create. So we're gonna do that right now. Just gonna make it in the uh, root directory here. So if we make a data table, search it here for data table, and then it's gonna ask for a pick row structure. And if we just type in, uh, gameplay tag table row, uh, we can use that. Hit OK. And for now, I'm happy with just calling it gameplay tags data table. So we'll take away the new and add gameplay tags. Now we're going to open this up because we need to add a tag. And it's simply clicking add. We have the row name, but then there's also the tag, which we are going to just call tag. Now, I don't want to confuse anyone by saying gameplay tags and tags too much. However, in these instances, this is where you would change certain things, whether it's power ups, different enemies, whatever you're referencing for the tag is where you would write the tag name. Whatever makes sense for you in the logic of your game and your programming, you can use. But for this instance, because I'm trying to be very simple in showing you how to tag, untag and compare tags, we obviously want to say when something's tagged, it's it's tagged so that when we get the text reference here, it will just say tag but you know what since i've changed my mind we're going to change it from tag to tagged and we just simply save that so now that we've created this data table with our gameplay tag we want to go back to the project settings where we had uh this index here we want to select the gameplay data table and that should have it like so all right so to start us off i'm going to be adding a gameplay tag to the cube and as you can see we don't have any references to the gameplay tags or their containers we need to add a variable first. So we're just going to call this one um, tag container. And we want to reference what's right here, which is called gameplay tag container. This one right here. And this is where all the tags for the game object are going to be stored. And what we want to do is get a reference to this tag. And then we want to add a gameplay tag to this container. So if we do add gameplay tag, connect that through here. And then with the tag here, we want it to be set as tag. Now, the next thing we want to do is make it so this text here actually says the name of the tag. To do this, I'm going to need to do a little bit of finagling. You might not always need this, but it is good to reference if you want to do any um, print debugging or stuff like that. So what we do is we're going to reference this tag here um, just to make a cleaner blueprint. We're going to reference it again and we're going to break this gameplay tag container. So if we do that right here break gameplay tag container and this will get all of the tags now of course in this instance we just need the one and only so we're going to do a, a get a copy and it's the first one so that's going to be zero and then we need to get that tag name simple as that now the next thing I need to do is reference the text for the cube so I'm just going to quickly grab the text um, do text here and it should we're going to set the text um, like so and so now we're referencing the text component as well as the value we want. So that's all set up like that. We hit in the uh, print string just in case. Now, if we head into our project uh, and highlight the tagged button, you'll see when we press it, it changes to tagged. Fantastic. That's what we want. Now on to the next thing, which is removing the tag. This is, of course, very similar uh, to it. We just grab a reference to this one again, get the container. We want to remove tag. And we just referenced the same tag we had before, which was tagged. And then what we'll do real quickly uh, is just copy this. And then we will hook it up, connecting the text like so. And we shall see now when we hit the tag button, it'll be tagged. And when we hit the untag button, there'll be no tag. It'll say none, which is what we want. Now, finally, we want to use the compare node. So we're going to move this one up. We again are going to grab our 
tag container like so. And we wanna see if any tags match the current tag. Now, if you were to have multiple tags, it would be a bit more complicated because you have to get the correct tag within the reference and you might even need to do a for loop if you have multiple going through the same actor. Luckily in this instance, we just have one tag. So it's as simple as checking whether or not the tag we are going to uh, compare it to matches. So we've got the tag container, checking to see if it has the tagged uh, in this instance, we want an exact match. Some tags might, you know, for example, I've had ones where it references a table being full and empty, and it will just check to see whether or not there's table and then probably return true because we want an exact match. In most instances, I'm going to click that to be yes. And then we're going to copy this text function again. Uh, but in this instance, we don't want it to actually match the tag because if they do match and it's true, so we're going to have a little branch here. So if it's true that they match, we want to have a literal value, which means we can customize it and have it as match. I'm going to quickly move this all out of the way. We'll do a false, but this time when it doesn't match, we'll say no match. So now when we hit the launch of the project, it's tagged. Now, if we compare, it matches because we're both, as we saw in the blueprint here, check and see whether or not the current tag matches the tag. And it does. Um, whereas if we untag it, so there's no tag now on the object, and we ask to see if there's a tag on it, there is no match. And so there we have it. That's how you compare and change different gameplay tags. If you have any more questions about gameplay tags, I've also linked a Unreal Engine video that goes through all the things about gameplay tags and how to use them properly. This is just a simple instance where sometimes you might use them in smaller projects. They are definitely catered towards more larger scale projects like RPGs. However, the good thing with these tags though is that you can just reference them from a drop down menu. You don't need to worry about things like spelling or being too tired and making mistakes. It does create less user errors in the project. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Let me know of any more topics or things you want to see me cover within Unreal Engine. And if you're new to my content, please do check out my other videos. I do other things like devlogs uh, and little game dev tips and tricks. So be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.